Hi, welcome to our sixth video on two types of forgetting. In psychology, forgetting is the loss of ability to recall something a person has previously learned. Now the question is, do we forget things because the memory trace is no longer there, is no longer available? Or do we forget because the memory is no longer accessible? Just a reminder that the cognitive approach is interested in the internal processes of the mind. The brain is often compared to a computer, with information being input through our senses, processed in our brain, and results in an output which could be a belief, an emotion, or an action. I've highlighted the bits on the checklist to which this video refers. The first theory is a very basic theory. It's that of trace decay. Hebb suggested that a memory leaves a physical change, an engram. Now, if the engram fades, it's no longer available. Evidence comes for this from a rather horrid experiment by Lashley in 1931. He trained rats to learn mazes for food, but then he cut out bits of their brain. The more he cut out, the more the rats forgot, which indicates that it's a physical storage problem. This may lead to an application to help people with dementias, giving them chemotherapy. Now I know we normally think of chemotherapy as specifically for cancer, but in psychology we use the term the chemotherapy simply to refer to drug therapy. The other theory came from Tulving in 1974. It's the idea that memory is there, but you can't get to it. He said that the information about our surroundings and emotions are encoded with every memory. For example, if you propose to your partner while a certain song was on, just hearing it will bring back details of the proposal and make you relive those hopefully positive emotions. Let's have a look at how helpful retrieval cues can be. Have a go at this. What about with a cue? Yes, cues definitely help. Here are the answers. I particularly like the picture of the dog in Lederhosen from Germany. So Tolvin came up with this. We call it the encoding specificity principle. The greater the similarity between the encoding event and the retrieval event, the greater the likelihood of recalling the original memory. We can use this when revising for retrieval in exams. You know what the conditions will be like in exams. You're going to be silent, seated at a desk, writing in black. If you want to, cre if you want to create these conditions when you're encoding, when you're learning, you will have optimal recall. Now the two types of cues. Context cues refers to the setting or situation where information is recorded. For example, it could be a particular room, it could be with a certain group of people, it could be the weather. State refers to your internal state. This can be physical or psychological. For instance, Goodwin et al. in 1966 found that when people hid money when they were drunk, they were more able to find it again when they were drunk again. When they were sober, they couldn't find the cash. Here's the activities for next lesson. <laughs> 